and you look at something like the Qian Pao, and it's got a focus sash on it. You don't want to break it. But let's get into this Masters Division Top 8 match between Diego Ferreira and Michael Kelsch at the 2024 Pokemon World Championships. So you get an interesting lead matchup here, and perhaps this could help uh, inform what the other Pokemon on the team might be. Uh, Chien Pao, you'd assume, might be a tell that Entei could be in the back, so that's some good information potentially for Diego. And uh, perhaps Ogre Pond showing up early, you know, uh, has a number of potential benefits here. A follow me could make it easier for Kalak to set up the Trick Room. It could also be a hint that maybe he expected to see the Urshifu as lead instead. Yeah, the Urshifu would have been a good thing for this Ogre Pond to see, just to know that you could water absorb away some of those uh, rapid strike hits, but instead it is going to be this Chan Pao. And now that's something that I think is going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with, knowing that it does have that ability that's going to drop the defenses of everything else around it. Yeah, it can uh, cause some big damage, and almost all the Pokemon on this team do do fuse physical damage. You know, even Body Press benefits from it, despite not actually using the attack stat. So, uh, something that uh, Diego's going to have to deal with, but we see a quick terrestrialization. He's going to go right into his strategy. Well, you do see this Ice Rider Calyrex take on that Dragon Terra. Not necessarily one of the Terras that you typically end up seeing, but it's a great defensive one to be able to deal with those attacks across the way. It's a double up into that slot and a taunt into the Samazenta, which is going to help to at least shut down like Wide Guard to know that you can just nail these Glacial Lances as you set up this Trick Room. Yeah, this is something we don't see often in these Restricted formats, right? A uh, whole bunch of damage going down on the on, uh, Calyrex, and, you know, it may not be long for this world. However, yeah, that wide guard's been negated. Uh, potentially three different attacking Pokemon on Diego's team really don't want to deal with that wide guard. So uh, give up a lot, but to give the trick room up, and now it's sort of an interesting decision. Do you try to attack with this LHP Calyrex? Do you try to shuffle one of your other Pokemon out before uh, trick room? Ex uh, too many turns expire. Um, with Calyrex being damaged so much, even with support from these Pokemon, it's very really difficult to get a second trick room up. So it will be very important now for Diego to seize the momentum. Well, take a look at this. This is a Pokemon that we did not get a chance to see in Diego's matchup earlier today. Day, and that is going to be the Torkoal that is finally making an appearance on the world stage on stream. Torkoal is going to set up the sun here, which is almost counterintuitive to the fact that you have this Ogre Pond Wellspring next to you that would love to be able to hit these big water type Ivy Cudgels. And conversely, you're also just set the sun for the Entei that you see across from you. Yeah, I mean, uh, Entei may, uh, may enjoy that. And for now, we're going to see Zamazetta doing a whole bunch of damage here, uh, knocking down the Ogre Pond to fairly low HP, low enough now that potentially, you know, a uh, pretty easy knockout for the extreme speed, should that be what uh, is desired on the other side of the field. However, you know, there's still a missing Pokemon. Uh, much like with Frigoraph, you have to respect the potential of that Ndidi being in the back. And uh, who? We might see it now. Mm -hmm. We surely might see that. And I think that's something that Michael's always going to have to consider a threat in the back of his mind. You can't feel too comfortable being able to go for something like that extreme speed. And as you mentioned before, there are three other priority attacks that you have to consider. Even Aqua Jet on that Urshifu. So as we see this Ndidi actually hit the field, it's not just the psychic terrain that you have to play around. But that rocky helmet too. Yeah, great sequencing, right? Uh, you know, you, if Rillaboom is the final Pokemon, do you really want to try to switch that into a Torkoal? No, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I think a lot of people would also agree that maybe that's not going to be particularly the best option. But I love that the Zamazenta here does have that Dragon Terra as well. We have seen this terrestrialization option being used on a couple of these restricted Pokemon as of late because it's very good at being able to deal with these elemental types of damage. So as we see this Torkoal end up going for the Eruption, it's able to do just a bit of chip to both the Zamazenta and the Entei. But the Dragon Terra absolutely makes sure that that hurts less. Yeah, now we've seen interesting spot. You know, the uh, the Dragon Terra paying off, and Zamazenta is just wailing away on these Pokemon. Uh, you know, uh, maybe perhaps making a uh, Diego feel or think twice about taunting it because it's fine in the offense, but uh, that's a really interesting situation. You know, the, the item on that Entei is that choice ban, so in the awkward situation where you're locked into a priority move with Psychic Terrain out, and yeah, as we mentioned before, uh, is Rillaboom, if Rillaboom is that last Pokemon, are you really going to switch it into an eruption? No, I once again, I am going to go agree with the consensus of the audience here, but I, how then do you get it in, right? Because I think ideally you're able to still kind of wail away with these body presses and Zamazenta is still putting out that damage. Be, but you got to remove this Ndidi at some point. Yeah, there, the sacrifice has to be made here, right? There isn't an option to, uh, you know, just have uh, everything work out smoothly. And they're just going to stay out here and do nothing, believing that the other two Pokemon are more valuable than uh, Entei here. 
Well, we do have yet another extreme speed. You can't do anything against that because you are choice band locked into it. And with this Torkoal still at such a high HP, it's going to be going for the eruption, getting the knockout onto the Entei. So as you foretold it, Michael has to sacrifice that piece of the puzzle to make sure that you can get rid of this terrain. Torkoal does take a meaningful amount of damage there, though, but you can see how much the Helping Hand boost has even put this Zamazenta into range of being knocked out next turn. Yeah, and that's a big deal too, right? Uh, as we mentioned, you know, there's probably not going to be a second trick room this, tr this game, although, man, uh, the way this is playing out, maybe there could be. Uh, and both sides have traded a lot of damage, but, uh, you know, there's still two Pokemon remaining on uh, Mikhail's side who have full health, so uh, he's done a pretty good job of damage trading. Uh, really important to survive the rest of Trick Room safely, though. It is. So we're looking at maybe the opportunity to go for something like the Protect on the Zamazenta. Once that taunt has expired, you can go back to be able to do that. If you wanted to, you could also click Wide Guard in the face of this Torkoal, but you're going to see this Rillaboom finally hit the field. That's going to take this Psychic Terrain away from Diego, and you're going to maybe start to get some momentum back in your favor if you're Michael. Yeah, I mean, uh, now uh, at least you've got the terrain back, you're threatening a fake out, now these Pokemon sort of guaranteed to uh, uh, get through this trick room better, and uh, yeah, it's starting to look like a pretty decent situation, right? Uh, it's really a lot of damage taken, and it looks a little silly to have to extreme speed of its psychic terrain, but uh, you know, that was better than uh, just losing Rillaboom for nothing and then guaranteeing you will lose control of the terrain for the remainder of the game. So Rillaboom comes in at full health. It does have the opportunity here to go for a fake out. It stops the Torkoal for just a little while as Diego now has to think about his own plan B. Actually wants to preserve the Torkoal, maybe set up the stun a little bit later, but also give an opportunity here in the face of both of these Pokemon to consider, well, maybe Calyrex just, it's it's gotta go. Yeah, I mean, the 18 HP makes it pretty tough to get too much done here. Uh, and we do see Rillaboom going in the offense, getting the uh, critical hit fake out for the knockout. Uh, not quite how we normally see it, but uh, certainly won't be moving again this match after that. Yeah, I mean, that is just kind of insult to injury there. As now you look at this Indeedy not being able to get the heal pulse it would have wanted to, and had it actually survived, maybe you see the Zamazenta target into the Indeedy instead, and you all of a sudden have a much healthier Ice Rider Calyrex. You get to see what he's going for. They're like, oh, you know, maybe my opponent will uh, really play slowly, trying to be conservative at the end of his trick room, but uh, we do see the knockout out of Zamazenta knocking itself out on the Rocky Helmet. So both sides trading Pokemon here, and, uh, you know, as these Pokemon re enter the field uh, just about 100 HP remaining for Diego over the course of two Pokemon on the other side of the field you know this Chien Pao and the Rillaboom fully healthy and still that focus sash intact for Chien Pao and that's going to be huge because when you look at this ochre pot across the way you could even grassy glide it here if you wanted to I think that would be a great way to just take it out and this Chien Pao is also going to be very fast important to note that this Chien Pao also does have icicle crash throat chop and sucker punch as its item them, uh, as it's moves, a couple of different options here you could go for, knowing that the Torkoal has a assault vest, is always going to attack. Yeah, I mean, you see that value, too, in getting control of that terrain, right, where both these Pokemon have increased priority moves and uh, putting a really difficult position now for Diego to try to deal with. Uh, not looking good for him this game one, and even though, you know, he had that big trick room off, uh, we really see the impact of the restricted Pokemon not being able to attack at all in the game. Looks like it's just going to be a kind of thinking a little bit about how to move forward here. But because you're out of Trick Room, this Chien Pao just gets a chance to also just go for the knockout onto this Ogre Pond, take it out, and then we see the Rillaboom follow that up. It's got this Wood Hammer, it is going into the Torkoal, but even though it's not going to be very effective, it's still going to see the crew of the knockout. And so Michael Kelsch with the first game of this best of three in top eight. Yeah, very clean, but very strange win. Uh, you know, not too often that you extreme speed into Psychic Terrain twice and still like very decisively win the game. But uh, I think there was just a really great decision by him, you know, realizing, okay, well, uh, yeah, I would probably have preferred that I had locked into a different move now, but you know, I covered the options where if it was one of the other Pokemon, I really wanted to make sure I got that damage down and uh, I can still close out this game safely knowing what the last Pokemon actually is. A uh, very well played game by him. I think conversely, uh, it seemed like Diego kind of probably got what he was expecting there with the exception of the Urshifu not being present. So uh, maybe going to need a little different game plan if he wants to get through this set. So if you were in Diego's shoes, you look at this Ogre Pond, you go, okay, maybe not the most effective choice here because you don't have the ability on the other side that you were trying to actually uh, target down, but you also aren't able to deal that much damage either because you've got this Torkoal next to you. So what do you kind of think about putting in instead? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a tough lead. Uh, I, I don't know if you know, the option, I guess, if you want to really guarantee that Trick Room, I mean, you could try Indeedy instead, but losing Indeedy early is a, a huge potential problem, right? It's a very important Pokemon 
from this matchup. Uh, your Trick Room isn't all that valuable if you lose the Psychic Terrain, so you don't want to just put it out there and sacrifice it to get Trick Room up, uh, potentially, and wind up in a similar spot to what you were in uh, in the first game anyway. Uh, so I guess we'll have to see. You know, maybe we'll see some of the other Pokemon. Uh, it's hard to imagine that, like, you know, maybe the Gallade uh, is drastically better in this situation, but I uh, can't claim to be too much of an expert on Gallade in this regulation, so hey, maybe we'll be surprised. I don't know. I'm looking at the Gallade right now when I see Terra Normal Entei. I'm seeing Chen Pao. Pretty juicy targets here for something like that Sacred Sword that we could see do a little bit of damage, but We'll find out now as we head into game number two of this best of three. Michael Kelsch is up 1-0. Another win here. He moves on to the top four. So Diego, got to bring it back somehow. It's going to be both of the restricteds on the field across from each other to start it off. Yeah, I think so. This is kind of a lead combination. I think that probably uh, we were expecting, right? Uh, no need to change up too much with these Amazetta and the Chien Pao out uh, in game two. Kind of just like, okay, well, prove that you can beat me. And the flip side of the field, like, okay, the Ogre Pond lead did not really work. Uh, I probably wouldn't prefer to take a ton of damage on Ndidi, but I need to do something here. And if it does, uh, potentially pull away a couple of attacks with a follow me, at least then breaking the Focus Sash maybe with a uh, potential Rocky Helmet there. So I'm hoping that this follow me is going to be able to do just that and give the space to this Ice Rider Calyrex to actually set up for this Trick Room. But take a look at that. It is just going to be champ out, going for the throw top, getting that one hit knockout. Instead of his Ndidi packing. So what can this Zomas to do knowing that it's got free real estate to go after this Ice Rider Calyrex here? It just goes for the body press. It's going to be doing a huge chunk of damage there while the Trick Room gets activated. Yeah, that doesn't seem all that much better. And I guess one thing to keep note because it's a throw chop, yeah, doesn't even get to break the Focus Sash. So uh, these Pokemon, uh, not too upset. Torkoal going to come out here and get us in a similar situation as the previous game where um, you know, you're threatening uh, an attack onto a potential roll boom switch in. However, unlike that first game, Zamazenta is not taunted. So the option of a wide guard and a Rillaboom switch if Rillaboom is indeed in the back, uh, which would really put uh, Digo in a tough spot. Really would. And I think, too, when you take a look at maybe the opportunity cost That's right, here. the Focus Sash, by the way. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, hey, so it's, it's hard. Like, you you like, okay, throw chop. Maybe it's a sound base yeah. move. No, I'm I get excited that, too. By all this damage. <laughs> there is a lot of damage right now and even more to come as we take a look at this next turn. Potentially, the Rillaboom does get a chance to actually switch in, take that Tian Pao's place. But it's all eyes on this Zamazenta because this is going to be the biggest threat that Diego is going to have to deal with. We do see a Terrestrialization here, though. Yeah, as, uh, once again, the uh, Dragon-type terrestrialization uh, going to help out a little bit defensively, although uh, kind of w weakens the type matchup with both of the Pokemon currently on the field. Uh, though, you know, we'll have to see what this Chinpa opts to go for now. Uh, you know, an Ice-type attack would take advantage of his terrestrialization. It really would. Either way, though, you're going to just uh, wait to find out. You've got the Protect here onto both the Zamazenta and the Chienpao, just to kind of see what is getting what this Torkoal and this Calyrex are trying to get up to. I think this Protect is also pretty smart. You're just kind of biding your time, figure out maybe your next move, and also get rid of one of these Trick Room turns. Yeah, I mean, there's not really uh, anything lost here, right? If your plan is still, I'm going to Wide Guard and switch into the Arulam, you get to find out that the Strastalization is going to happen for no real cost, and you get rid of one of the turns of Trick Room, right? You do eventually want to get through it, so uh, pretty low-risk play, and you know, gets one step closer to killing off this Trick Room. Do you play the wide guard game? There's certainly that mind game, right? But do you just say, okay, I know you're not gonna wide guard because if you're wide guarding, you're not doing anything else. Uh, it's interesting that we see the Entei coming in. So uh, I, I think that probably makes it uh, more viable not to go for the wide guard because neither of these Pokemon are in like huge danger. Zamazenta going to go for the terrestrialization to answer the other side. And yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you're probably worried about an icicle uh, spear coming in the other direction, but uh, you know, hey, maybe you get away with it. Well, right now, it is just going to be the eruption, so that's going to hit into both targets. Entei switching in and taking about 50% for its troubles. And we also see this Terror Dragon Zamazenta have to take this Glacial Lance. Not enough on either Pokemon to be able to secure the knockout, but with this body press, that Calyrex, it's at least done something here in this game to try to get these targets down really low. Yeah, it gets to attack this time. Uh, a single Glacial Lance going off, so uh, better than nothing. And yeah, there's uh, not a huge lot of punishment. We do see the Ursaluna coming in. So uh, that's the mix up from the last game for Diego. We see Ursaluna instead of the Ogre Pond. Another Pokemon capable of dealing a lot of damage, but also another Pokemon that gets to 
play the wide guard game, right? Uh, you know, potentially uh, would love to see uh, the opportunity to go for an earthquake, but you really can't do that anyway with Torkoal. So it's actually a pretty good pin, right? Uh, an eruption, pretty scary against both of these Pokemon. And then Ursaluna can instead choose to go for its single target attack, uh, try to pick up a knockout on one of these Pokemon. Yeah, Headlong Rush should be great, but remember that the drawback is the fact that they does drop that Ursaluna's defense and special defense. So you have to figure out a way to weave those in at the right time, but you're also not making yourself too vulnerable in the when this trick room is going to expire. There's two turns left. So Diego on a bit of a timer to try to make sure that you can actually take advantage of those turns. Protect here from the Zamazenta. So at least one more turn is going to get bypassed here as Torkoal actually goes for Weather Ball. It's going to be enough to get the knockout onto this Entei. And so even though maybe you don't get a chance to actually attack into the Zamazenta, there's Urza Luna gets a chance to get this now Guts Boost for free. Yeah, pretty good trade, right? Uh, winds up playing around the wide guard play very nicely there, where that would have just lost two Pokemon if he'd gone for it. Uh, Zamazenta is able to stay on the field. But yeah, as you mentioned, you know, that Guts Boost activates, and it's not just that headlong run is a single target option for this Ursa Luna. It also has the option of using Facade, which is now at its full power. Facade is going to be great, too, because that's something that Rillaboom, if in the back, is not going to resist. So we're going to end up seeing what Michael decides to lock into here, knowing that there's one more turn of Trick Room remaining. So here is the Rillaboom. You don't have the Terra either, so staring at something like this Torkoal, and you can only pick one, pick one target to fake out. Yeah, pretty awkward turn there, where uh, something likely to be lost, and uh, you know, also, you know, what will the Pokemon do if you don't fake them out, right? I mean, Torkoal at least has the option of a single target or a spread move. Um, you know, it's a, it'd be pretty risky to try to go for the eruption, but if it doesn't get faked out, potentially you lose both of your Pokemon. Uh, and the other slot, you know, uh, not as much in danger of losing both at the same time, but could still easily knock out either of these Pokemon. I really like what Diego has gone for here. Try to go for the spread damage if you can. If there is no white guard, then you do get the knockouts. And then I think you just take the double KO. But look at that. Zamazenta is able to get another protect here. That's yeah, a double so, protect instead. And that's huge because that does mean that even though the fake out is going to be able to stop this Torkoal on its tracks for now, you saw where that targeting was going. And this is the worst case scenario here for Diego is you're not able to get the knockout onto the Zamazenta and your trick room is gone. Yeah, I guess you can fake out both Pokemon, right? It's a little unconventional way to get there, but one up really paying off and now suddenly it's a dominating lead. It is a huge lead here. Now outside of this trick room environment, you see this Rillaboom, you know that it's going to be faster than this Ursa Luna. You can just go ahead and hit it with a wood hammer, take it out. Duracellization is also gone for Diego. Yeah, and uh, it's a little simpler play on the other side of the field. You know, Torkoal isn't able to protect. It's holding an Assault Vest item. And, you know, I really like that play. I think even if you don't hit the double protect, you know you're going to enter the next turn with two powerful physical attackers and that uh, the potential for the Chin power on the field. I guess this way you don't get it yet. You know, it's waiting in the wings, but uh, really tough spot now. And uh, Diego's uh, tournament could be over if he doesn't think of something incredible very quickly. Yeah, I, I, is there even a world where you consider even just going for the protect here and just hoping that Michael does something different with the Ursaluna? Yeah, I mean, I think you need a mistake, right, at this point. So, uh, no protect. However, we're going to see a bunch of damage coming the other direction. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a wood hammer right into that Ursa Luna. It's not going to get a chance to attack as Michael secures another KO. And this Torkoal is going to have to try to do what its other partners could not. And it can only go for this single target weather ball right now. This Rillaboom is going to get knocked out for its troubles, but you still have that Chien Pao. It's about to hit the field. We saw how much body press was able to do to this Torkoal. It's it's not much longer before Michael gets to move on to top four. Yeah, I don't know how uh, Diego's going to have this one. Uh, perhaps he'll just have to tell uh, Mikkel that you know, you're not actually not allowed to touch Torkoals here in Hawaii uh, because I think that's going to be Torkoals only chance. There's a 50-yard rule. <laughs> there is a 50-yard rule in play, but unfortunately does not end up mattering for this Torkoal. Diego locks in the forfeit, and Michael in a 2-0 finds himself in familiar territory. He is in the top four of the 2024 Pokemon World Championships. Uh, really excellent set there. I mean, uh, the double protect looks a little wonky, but I don't think it made too big of a difference to the outcome of the game. Uh, just a 